Yo, all right. Uh, I mean, I think we got something on our hands here. As you can tell from the title of the video, I have not played The Last of Us, and obviously that means part two either. I know, I know. Shame on me, huh? I mean, it seems like I'm just constantly depriving myself of good content for the sake of the bad. Imagine. And seriously, I'm just one of those sweaty babies that still just plays Apex, and honestly, story single-player games have just never really been my cup of tea. Like, I haven't played any of the games that are in the God of War series, but the main difference between God of War and The Last of Us is that I have watched people play through those games and even watched the hours-long cutscenes on YouTube like it's an actual theatrical film. Which, in a way, it kinda was. Those games were insane. The point is, for the first time, honestly, in a long time, I'm in a minority group of people that don't have the knowledge or the pre-existing bias to the source material. And while I'm a huge advocate for fan service instead of having unoriginal ass Hollywood ideas just thrown onto an already existing IP, I'm gladly here to say that episode one of The Last of Us was pretty fucking awesome. I'm probably going to get extremely roasted in these comments for missing all of the nuances and the context and the hidden meanings within the hidden meanings while giving this brief synopsis. But that's just what we're here for, huh? The story kicks off with one of our two main characters, Joel, as he deals with the falling out of a fungal outbreak that's led to a post-apocalyptic world. Dealing with the grief of losing his daughter at the very beginning of the... outbreak? Pandemic? Apocalypse? You know what I'm getting at. Along with the new knowledge of having a missing brother, Joel has become a cold and grizzled man, with his only companion in the show being his maybe girlfriend or close friend Teresa or Tess. Obviously, I'm not sure if she was in the game, but from an outside perspective, I would say she was a nice addition. God, I hope she doesn't die in like episode two or something. Yeah. <laughs> With the knowledge of Joel's missing brother, the two have set in motion the plans to move outside of the quarantine city limits in order to find him. Meanwhile, we're introduced to our second main character, Ellie a feisty-ass rebel-like teenager that has a foul mouth and god-tier genetics. Because even from someone who hasn't played the games, the hidden meanings within the hidden meanings of the first episode showcase that Ellie is immune to whatever type of fungal disease that has plagued their society. And due to a slew of unfortunate events, Joel and Tess are now tasked with the duty of transporting Ellie across a plague-stricken United States, while also having the task of finding his missing brother in the back of his mind. So obviously when it comes to first impressions, the show gave me huge I Am Legend vibes. Maybe just because both intros feature lifelike doctor scenes on a talk show displaying their ideas of how the apocalypse world would start and how it would even be handled. To even the setting of New York and the landscape of it all, it was pretty nostalgic even if it wasn't by choice, and it made it pretty easy to settle into the structure and the tone of the show from the very first scene. As someone who doesn't know Joel or Ellie, it's truly up to Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey to make me care about these characters. And as someone, or I imagine most of us that haven't seen Bella Ramsey since she was killing a giant and being loyal as hell to the Starks as Lady Morma in Game of Thrones, it's a cool experience watching a young actress branch out and strive in other roles that are completely different from their original. I mean, she's already doing anything better than Sophie Turner ever did. A fucking wanker. Is that like a personal attack or something? When it comes to Pedro Pascal, I know some people aren't, but I'm a fan for sure. From his roles as Whiskey in The Second Kingsman, to Mando in The Mandalorian, Oberyn in Game of Thrones, and even in some of his lowest roles like the Magic Rockman in Wonder Woman 1984. The performances are always still there from this guy. And I mean, imagine having to work hard with Gal Gadot and having to stare at that same face every single scene, no matter what's going on. Please, I know she's still gorgeous, but how long can you really run on that, you know? Holy crap, you're beautiful. But all in all, Pedro as Joel was riveting, to say the least. His performance in the scene where he loses his daughter was tragic, and there were so many little nuances throughout the show to showcase who Joel was as a character pre-apocalypse and post-apocalypse, making it easy to already stand behind and support the character just from episode one. 
both Bella and Pedro, I wouldn't say exceeded expectations because it's not like I'm someone who truly had any as someone going into the show extremely blind. But as somebody who's seen many, many other TV shows, it's not an easy feat to build character bonds with its audience after episode one. And that's something I already feel with Joel, Ellie, and Tess. In order to dive a little further, I had a friend that watched the episode a day before me and he asked me to look at how the show was shot. And well, I'm happy that he did. Because the show is truly shot as if it's directly out of a video game. The camera angles, the lighting, you could truly tell that the people behind the show aren't your typical Hollywood types. It seems like a fairly faithful adaptation, and judging solely from the first episode, I don't see why or how that's going to change in the show going forward. Hopefully it doesn't, and prayers up, you know? But I'm definitely going to keep up with the show nonetheless. I didn't dive into, I don't want to say, subplots, because honestly, I don't know how important the factions or the government is to the overall narrative of the show or the game going forward. I just don't have any real type of information on what the two factions even stand for. As of right now, it's just cliche old world government trying to form a new world government against Rebel Scum. But as I said, I'm going to continue to watch, so you can look out for episode reviews every single week like I did with She-Hulk, and I don't know, I'm just excited for the journey as someone who hasn't played the games. I really hope it works out for everyone in the long run. If you enjoyed the video, then make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and I guess to also stay updated on the episode reviews. Make sure to leave some comments, and... Oh man, I can't believe this is my first time I think I'm ever going to say this, but try to keep it spoiler free. I'm definitely down to talk to people that have played the game to do some comparing and some contrasting, but let's try to keep it to the material that's been put out, you know, for the sake of everyone's experience. But otherwise, thank you guys for watching the video, and that's all the words I got for you today. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.